So, end of the workday, rush hour out. You can see some of the traffic actually lined up on the bridge here. And I'm coming back from having returned to Traveler's Lodge so I can get my pack and some other stuff that I needed to go to this first record shop of my record recon effort. So, came across the bridge. And this time, one of the things I did differently was I actually had noticed, as I mentioned in the previous episode, that I need to cut left here to get across the peninsula over to the north side of town to be able to head uh, east to get out to the record shop I was going to. So here I cut down this way and I found going through town was dramatically easier if I cut left here as the flow shows. Uh, the bus was just sitting there so I bounced around it, headed down, got to the street corner down here and just cut a right and, and basically made it through downtown pretty easily. Got a few little pointers here. <laughs> um, so I'm using the, the the bike bus lane, the bus priority lane or whatever it is. As you can see, it says bus only, but it shows the bike dude. It, it's like a shared lane with the buses. There's not a lot of buses, but there's a segment down here where people are driving. Um, so I'm not really sure where that starts and stops. But anyway, I got down here. Everybody driving downtown in Pittsburgh is like super freaking chill. No one seems to be in a huge hurry, which is logical because you can't go fast down there. Um, and anyway, like I passed up these cars, went around them, cut through here. This person's just parked like in the road. And then this dude's just yelling. Boom, see? You gotta have calm nerves if you're gonna ride through a city, even as chill as Pittsburgh. It's pretty funny. But anyway, got over here. There's the bridge I'm taking over to the north side. And I'm almost on the way where I am going to cut down onto the trail. But one of the things you might have noticed, that woman just like shifted right as I came up. One thing about Pittsburgh is it's very clear, and, and no city really seems to, in the United States, have a population that understands how bicycles work. Like as far as a thing moving around on sidewalks or roads or whatever, People tend to just really overreact to a bicycle being anywhere near them. It, it always kind of trips me out. But anyway, got down here and I overshot and I should have like looped back a little bit, went down some steps and got directly onto the trail. But I went down this like weird side road and eventually found a little parking spot by the trail and got in here. And then basically the north side trail is this beautiful trail. It goes by the old Heinz campus. Uh, I guess you would call it that. It's it's the old place where all the you know the ketchup, the Heinz ketchup place, is or was. It's mostly like condos now and some other hipster stuff. But anyway, it's all good. Uh, went along here, and as you can see, beautiful. It's all just greenway like this. Uh, just bike, people running, jogging, etc. Um, no obstructions. You're just smooth sailing the whole way. So the Four or five miles or whatever it is east that I had to go was real easy. Over to the left there, you can see some of the stacks of the old Heinz plant. You can also see on this bridge here, it's got some classic architecture too, holding it up. But it's, you know, it's one of those steel slash stone bridges that Pittsburgh is somewhat well known for. And then on the right hand side, you can kind of see some of the new construction or new build out of the city over there on the right hand side of the river. Over to the left is a little bit more of the Heinz plant. Those classic steeples to the place. I don't, I don't think you would actually call them steeples on an industrial plant like that. But anyway, that's what they were. And then you can kind of see how it's, it's you know, it's kind of like nicely renovated. And there's probably some offices over there too, in addition to whatever the condos are as such. As I got down here, there's this switchback that I needed to take to get over to an island to take part of the trail because it splits at some point. And what I found interesting is this switchback is built and designed with like the old steel looking type of architecture, but it's modern, you know, concrete rebar, reinforced, whatever. But as I went up here, I, I noticed just like so many of these trails, it's old railroad infrastructure is what it is. Because Pittsburgh, like most of the eastern United States, 
was 100 billion thousand percent built by railroad infrastructure just like you know 99 percent of the country really anything of a substantial note in the united states built by railroads most of the modern stuff very laughable but anyway there's that bridge up there and that that's an old railroad bridge that's been repurposed for this trail which is pretty cool I got up here, I just kind of slowed down and rolled across, looking at the river, checking things out. But also, what's kind of funny is the, the little island that it comes over to, uh, the, the trail just immediately drops into this gravel trail, and it's, it's kind of like a, looks like an upper scale neighborhood, maybe it is, maybe it's not, I don't know. I always have a little bit of trouble telling sometimes, but it's nice, it's well kept. Uh, the trail's real nice, the gravel's not bad, you know, it's easy to ride on. And it's just a little island that's sitting out in the river that, that has a residential neighborhood on it for the most part. And I guess on the, the east end, as you can see there, the way I'm heading, there's some, like boat docks and stuff like that. And here I actually had to go up and go back across on this bridge, which was a mess. But anyway, I went down, looped back around, got on the trail, and then this is back on the actual trail that runs along the river. This part's a little raised area. Eventually it went back to, you know, standard blacktop on old rail road bed. And above there you can see some old rail infrastructure that's just not removed, but it's no longer used anymore. And as you ride along in Pittsburgh, you'll see tons of that. And there's another uh, steel bridge right to the right there that you can see. And that comes in and used to be another line right where the trail goes. And eventually I got to Millville and it cuts around across an active main line right there. And then slowly but surely under the interstate, which cuts Mealville off from the river. And I kind of wound down here via the sidewalk because I wasn't really sure. It was a little sketch with all the on ramps, off ramps and stuff like that. I wasn't sure where the traffic was going. So just kind of played it as slow and safe even though there were sharrows in the road, but you know how those things go. And here it looked like it opened up, so I just cut straight through the massive intersection and directly down this little main road in Millville. And sure enough, this is the way I wanted to go. This is the way I needed to go. And if you look to the right and just directly down here, you'll notice there's basically two main streets to Millville, and that's it. And it immediately gets in all these little shops, some houses, etc., and it's just it's this cute little classic American town with all sorts of stuff going on. It's pretty cool. I rode down a few minutes and then down here at the end of this main street, right over there is Attic Records. And they have a mural on the one side, a mural on the other side of the main entrance there to the left. I had to come down here and I, there was a car behind me or something so I had to like kind of flip around make a U-turn to get over here and with that I have arrived at Attic Records so time to lock up and go see what they got or just looking? Um, there's an Omnium Gatherum record in the window. You got it's more? It's not a record. Yeah, we have it. Uh, hey, Tone. Omnium Gatherum. All right. While they were looking, I decided to take a little bit of a look around myself just because Holy shit, the number of records in this place. This place is huge. And come to find out, there's a warehouse across the street too for a bunch of more stuff that they have. But anyway, they got CDs and, and but largely records. And it's just, it's endless shelves and shelves and shelves of records, as you can see. Like there, there must be, I'd say about 6,000 square feet, maybe more. I can check across the street if you want to. Uh, and the, the, guy, the, the sure. proprietor there mentioned he could check across the street, but I told him, oh, you don't have to do that. What Just see if other, it's here or whatever. Metal and metal tangential stuff you have. 
Oh, I have a whole metal section. Yeah, that's oh, what wait, I'm asking. Are you looking for the band on the Gathering? I, I saw the record in the window. The theoretical right. record in the window. So if yeah, you got that well, one. That's, right, but that's by King Gizzard. So are you looking for the band on the Gathering? Yes. Okay, well then that changes things because oh. I'm glad I didn't have it because that's not what you're looking for. <laughs> this is all punk and metal here. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know. If and holy shit, look at this. This is one of the biggest selections of metal that I've seen in most of the record shots I've been through. But I, I can check. I don't have any Omnium Gatherum, but oh, uh, no worries. the A's start like up here. Okay. And then, you know, after this ends, it goes like down there, around here, and it finishes up here. Awesome. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yep. And so I began to peruse all of these records. This shop was great. The crew was great. Um... I chit-chatted no, with them a little bit more. Yeah. They showed me a few more places where they had some other types of music I was into, you know, jazz, whatever. Uh, and I did end up picking up an Obscura album that I hadn't been able to pick up and a uh, Bodum After Midnight. So I did pick up some records. I was I didn't want to pick up too many because I had to carry them in my pack. And again, more on that later. Uh, but Attic Records. I tell you what, this this is, and I'll go ahead and, you know, get right to the punch. This was easily my favorite shop in, in Pittsburgh. Like, hands down, my favorite shop. The crew working the place were great. They they had a great attitude about stuff. I could tell they were actually into music and everything, which is great. Um, and I just went through and checked out stuff. Eventually found the records. I think I'd spent 45 minutes just looking at stuff. It was great. And, and of course, you know, having a good conversation with the crew. And after all that, I just headed out. Yeah. And for the first time since the beginning of the pandemic, I paid with cash. It was a freaky experience. But that's how I was rolling in Pittsburgh. Just straight cash everywhere. And I did that for a specific reason. Largely because I wanted to make sure I had appropriate tips on the train trip and everything for the crew. But also, I don't know if anybody's ever observed this, but it's quite a bit easier to budget when you actually are running around with cash versus just slinging plastic everywhere. So I gave that a try just to see how it would work out. So now that I've given you my TMI on the budget, uh, I did head into Millville a little bit further just to check everything out because it looked like such a cool, you know, uh, town or area of a town. I guess it's its own town. It seems to be. Um, it's it's definitely like on the map. It's not part of Pittsburgh technically, so I think it is its own town as far as like you know city government and stuff like that. So I headed down here and I noticed, oh, there's a statue of a dude like a World War Two or World War One guy. World War One, not World War Two, and I kind of circled around and zoomed in, and sure enough, it was actually a statue with a bunch of names on it. And I was like, "What is up with this?" And I checked it out, looked it up afterwards, and yep, it is the Millvale Great War Memorial because Millvale actually sent a lot of guys to fight in World War One, which is kind of wild ratio-wise because it's not a big city. I think there's maybe. 10, 20,000 people here. Maybe it was 50,000 people back then or something. I don't know. But either way, I hung out in Millville for another hour or two, went over to the Millville grocery here, picked up some food, went over to this uh, little spot here, this this pocket park, as they call it, right? Which is directly across the street from Attic Records. And I just hung out, uh, basically ate an evening snack, had a drink, um, and then headed back into Pittsburgh after that. It was an absolutely great outing, absolutely awesome record store, highly recommended. Until next episode, keep thrashing. Cheers. Cheers.